Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo of a pyramid boo-boo stain. Off of that subscribe button so we can climb even further beyond the 1K ladder currently sitting at 1,041. Thank you all so much for all the support. It really does mean the world to me. So I was trying to figure out what I wanted to upload tonight, right? And I say tonight because it's literally 10, 20 at night. I usually make my videos at night. <laughs> um, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to upload and what I wanted to talk about. And, you know, we're in a tier zero format. We're in a format that's not really a whole lot of fun. I mean, at least for me, like I don't have any regionals coming up. There's no YCSs around my area. We have some remote duels coming up that no one really gives a fuck about because let's just be honest, you're going to have cheaters in remote duels. Like I think remote duels are the worst thing in existence. So I figured, you know what? Why not we talk about an old school deck? This is the Pyramid of Light. This is one of my favorite cards out of the entire game of Yu-Gi-Oh. I saw the original movie and it was so cool. <laughs> The card itself is not that good, but we're going to be getting into that because this build I actually posted on my channel eight years ago, back in May of 2014, when a guy won like his locals or some sort of local championship in his area with this Pyramid of Light deck while he was playtesting for a YCS that was coming up. So let's talk about it, shall we? So this is the Pyramid of Light. It's a continuous trap, and it says, if this face-up card is removed from your side of the field, destroy Andro, Sphinx, and Finks to Leia on your side of the field and remove them from play aka banish them. Now the reason why this card's a thing is because obviously if you saw the Pyramid of Light movie then it's a thing, but then you have cards like Andrew Sphinx and Finx Talea which this person did not play all those years ago and of course Thinny and the Great Sphinx which can only be summoned when Sphinx Talea and Andrew Sphinx are destroyed at the same time aka with Pyramid of Light and then you can pay 500 life points to summon it, and then you pay 500 to increase his attack by 3,000 points until the end of the end phase. So he becomes 6,500 attack and 3,000 defense, which is insane. <laughs> now, is that good in today's standards? No. I mean, they need more support. They need something to help them, you know, win a game. But, you know, this build's eight years old, and I thought, you know what? It would be fun to make this, like, a channel-wide project. Like, you guys could leave a comment and, you know, talk about things that could be changed. We could update this, you know, as the months go by and talk about, like, things that we've updated to it. To, like, maybe see if we can make Pyramid of Light somewhat competitive. I mean, shit, if it can beat Crystal Beast, then doesn't that mean it's, like, at least a rogue deck? <laughs> so, with all that out of the way, let's dive into this retro of a retro deck profile so we're playing three copies of malefic cyber end because we're playing mount of the bound creator and if you have skill drain face up then you don't need to have a field spell because you can summon out the malefic and then its effects are automatically negated we're playing three copies of andrew sphinx it literally has blue eye stats 3025 so you pay 500 light points to special summon it when pyramid of lights on the field it can't attack during the turn that it's normal or special summon. It can't be special summoned from the graveyard, and if it destroys a defense position monster as a, as a result of battle, then you inflict damage to your opponent's life points equal to half the attack of the destroyed monster. So that's pretty decent. I mean, it's a level 10. The Malefics are level 10, so that opens you up to, like, rank 10 plays. You know, you can do some shenanigans. We've got two copies of Beast King Barbos because it was a good level 8 at the time. Uh, three copies of Card Card D because this card used to be like 60 to 70 fucking dollars. Like, it was insane. So it can't be special summon during your main phase 1. And if it's normal summon this turn, you contribute it to draw 2, but then it becomes the end phase. And you can't special summon during the turn you activate this effect. So, in a slower format, like even hat format, summoning this thing to draw 2 and ending your turn, or even setting back row and then drawing 2, was disgusting. We're playing two copies of Swords of Revealing Light because in a deck like this, you want to be able to stall back in the day. Three copies of Duality because even then, Duality was good. You could easily throw Prosperity in here. Two copies of Field Barrier to protect our copies of Mound of the Bound Creator. So level 10 or higher monsters on the field cannot be targeted or destroyed by card effects. So instantly, your Andrew Sphinx and Malefic Cyber End become pretty good. If a level 10 or higher monster destroys a monster by balance, sends it to the graveyard, the player who controlled the destroyed monster takes 1,000 damage. Then when this card's on the field is destroyed by card effects sent to the grave, you can add a Divine Monster from your deck to your hand. That's obviously never going to come up. Three copies of Reckless Greed because we didn't have a lot of draw power like this back in the day a uh, one torrential one phoenix wing torrential was at one as was macro three copies of imperial custom because you've got to be able to protect your pyramid of light so it says face up continuous traps cannot be destroyed by power by card effect except imperial custom and you can only control one face up imperial custom so you get your pyramid of light they try and pop it you can chain imperial custom and then you know it's just a way to protect it kind of like protecting a field spell 
Three copies of Skill Drain, one copy of Shape, Sis Shape Sister. Uh, it summons itself as a level two Fiend Tuner, but it's still treated as a trap, but it's a continuous trap, so Imperial Custom protects it, same with Skill Drain. One Black Horn of Heaven, because this was used back in the day to stop special summons. Um, and then three copies of Bribe, because it's just always been a good negator. I put these two in the side just because, like, there wasn't a side deck in the original profile I posted. Um, so, like, these are just here as, like, I guess, concept, like, food for thought. Three Cyber Ends, so you can summon the Malefic. One Leo Keeper of the Sacred Tree. Don't ask me why all this shit's in the fucking extra deck. I just copied it from the original video. Uh, one Galaxy Destroyer. Two um, Gustav Max. We didn't have uh, the 4,000 beater Dreadnought, Juggernaut Leap thing back then. Uh, one Neo Galaxy Eyes. One Puppet Leo, because this thing's a fucking win condition. Uh, one Tachyon Dragon. One Heretic Seal over... Overlord of Heliopolis. Jesus Christ, I haven't had to say that in years. Uh, one Gimmick Puppet of Strings, one Felgrin, one Sylvan High Protector, and then one Gimmick Puppet Giant Grinder. Again, don't ask me why all this shit's in here. I don't even know whatever half these cards do. This extra deck is so asshole. So, this is a Pyramid of Light, as it was back in 2014. And, like, it's really cool to look back at these old decks and, you know, reminisce on, you know, decks I played back in the day. And, you know, if this was, you know, May of 2014, like, this would definitely pants a lot of people at Locals. I would love to just be able to, you know, bring this up to current 2022 standards. Like, obviously, in a Tier 0 format, something like this ain't going to be able to fucking compete. Like, Tier Element of Shizu is going to mill your fucking Pyramid of Light and you're just going to cry. <laughs> Like, then you're playing with three bricks. Like, obviously, number one, Pyramid of Light in general needs more monsters, needs more support, just needs a whole overhaul. I would love to see something amazing memories for Pyramid of Light, but I doubt that we're going to get anything like that. Um, and, I mean, I just think it would be fun to, like, recreate this deck somehow in 2022 standards. You know, throw in, you know, some cash tier cards, throw in Fenrir, you know, throw in Prosperities, throw in extra. Like, this deck... This deck obviously needs a huge overhaul. Like, I don't think you need to be playing Imperial Customs. You can maybe play a couple more macros or D fishers. Um, I don't really know Mound of the Bound Creator is the way to go. I mean, we've got so many better field spells now. We have access to Link monsters now. Like, you know, you got to understand, this was 2014. The most that we had access to was Synchros and Exceeds. We didn't have Pendulums. We didn't have Links. We didn't have, honestly, we didn't have a lot of the good Rank 8 Exceeds that we have now. Like, you know, again, even like with rank 10s, like we didn't have Pain Gainer, we didn't have Seven Sins, we had Gustav Max, but we didn't have Juggernaut Leave. Like, you could easily throw Juggernaut Leave into this extra deck. So there's a lot of ways that this could be converted into like a meta strategy or even throw it in with like, I don't know, maybe like a Cyber Dragon deck and like play some more high levels or play um like, what is it? Like the Train OTK deck where you focus on things like Gust Gustav Max and Juggernaut Lieb, but then you throw in like a little Pyramid of Light package. So I don't know. It's something interesting to keep in mind or maybe even like play a more pure Malefic deck, play triple skill drain because you don't really care about their effects. And then that way you don't have to have the field spell up to summon the Malefics. It's really interesting. Obviously, Pyramid of Light is not the best thing in the world because it's a continuous trap. You know, it's not something like a field spell that's going to really give you any sort of advantage in the game. And because of the fact that it's a continuous trap too, you can't trap trick it out. So you either got to draw into it or, you know, you have to somehow cheese it out. But I can't think of anything off the top of my head that lets you cheese out a continuous trap. So maybe you play this as like a going second OTK deck where... If you're lucky, you can set up a Pyramid of Light. I don't really know. Maybe it's a lost cause, but I figured that I would at least, you know, throw it up here for the community, not just my subscribers, but honestly the community as a whole, just to have fun with it. Like, you know, if you're playing an old school format, take this to like a Time Wizard format. If you're playing in like a 2014 format and just have fun with it. Like, I love this card. It's up there with the Seal Vori Calcos and the God cards. Like, the Pyramid of Light is just such a cool concept. The art is basic AF. <laughs> But, I mean, it's it's really cool regardless. And, like, this this artwork for Sphinx, Talea, and Thinian, and Andros is just so cool. So, guys, let me know what you think about this trip down Pyramid Memory Lane. And, uh, yeah, let me know how we can make this more metanized. You know, we don't got no Mystic Mind, so don't be, don't be suggesting Mystic Mind. That, that shit's banned now. So, I don't even think this deck would really benefit from Mystic Mind. So, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.